I'd like to take a minute to give you a visual of why the distributive property works the way that it works. So let's go back to drawing our beautiful circles. So let's say we have a group of two circles and also a group of 10 circles. And according to this equation, what we're going to want to do is both add them together and then triple them. So if we were to solve this problem the first way that we talked about, we would do this addition inside the parentheses first and then our multiplication. So we would take these two groups, the two and the 10 circles, and merge them into one group. Great, so now we have 12 circles in one big group. And then the next thing we wanna do is multiply this group by three. So that means we want three sets of this group of circles. So right now we have one set and I can add one more, which makes two sets and then I can add a third one. Remember, multiplication is just repeated addition. So now I have three groups of these 12 circles together and that's it. I can count these up and if I decide to do that right now, which I won't because I'm lazy, we would see that we have 36 circles. Okay, great, so that's the first method for solving this problem. However, we also have that second method of solving problems like this, and that's using the distributive property. So if we want to use the distributive property, then the first step is going to be to multiply each of the terms that's inside the parentheses by the three. So let's write down method two. First, we're going to say three times two, and then we're going to add that to three times 10, just like we saw in the last quiz. Starting with a group of two circles, I want to triple this, like we see in this first term. And then as we see in the second term, I want to triple this group as well. Great, so now I have two groups, one group of six circles, which is three times two, and one group of 30 circles, which is three times 10. And then I want to add those two groups together. So we need to merge this set of circles with this set of circles. And we end up with the exact same picture that we got using the first method. Once again, we have 36 circles all in one group. I hope this has given you some insight into why we're allowed to distribute multiplication to terms that are added together inside parentheses.